If you've been on the internet for the last five years or so, or you have children, you'll have undoubtedly heard of the show Bluey. Created by Joe Brum and produced by Ludo Studio, who are based in Queensland, Australia, Bluey is an animated series aimed primarily at preschoolers, and follows the exploits of the Healers, a family of anthropomorphic dogs. The family comprises of the titular character Bluey, a 6-7 year old blue healer puppy, her sister Bingo, a 4-5 year old red healer puppy, and their parents, Bandit and Chili. Each episode of the show lasts about 7-8 to eight minutes, and focuses on themes such as family and growing up, with some episodes also shunning a light on Australian culture. These themes are usually written around games that Bluey and Bingo come up with, such as Magic Xylophone, Keepy Uppy, and Onesies. These games often lead to Bluey and Bingo learning valuable line lessons, with Bandit and Chili also learning a thing or two about parenting. The Gila family are joined by a supporting cast of characters in their adventures, with these characters representing different dog breeds, such as Mackenzie, who is a Border Collie, or Rusty, who is a Red Kelpie. Bluey premiered in October 2018 in Australia, and it quickly became a cultural juggernaut thanks to its strong writing and positive messages. Kids and adults alike fell in love with the show, and it even took a significant place in internet culture, spawning a fandom of adults who have come to watch and enjoy the show, in a similar vein to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I'm not too proud to say that I'm one of those adults. I was introduced to the show late last year and I almost immediately fell in love with it, with some of my favourite episodes being Sleepy Time, Onesies, and Baby Race. It's wonderful to watch something with such a positive message, especially with the world crumbling around us as we speak, and some of the characters in the show are inspiring, especially Bandit, who is personally my favourite character, and not for the reasons you're thinking of, you dirty-minded people. Okay, maybe some of those reasons. In the year 2023, Bluey has certainly cemented itself on the world stage as one of the shining examples of animation, and obviously, with its popularity, that leads to merchandise, and merchandise inevitably leads to the video game tie-in. And in September 2023, we got just that, with Bluey the video game being announced for a November 17th release. That date has come and gone, and I've had the chance to play Bluey's first video game adventure. Okay, second, but do we really count mobile games here? What did I think of the game, and more importantly, how easy are the achievements? Well, make your favourite duck cake, chow down on some biscuits and do the cheap cha-cha as I unlock all the achievements in Bluey the video game. Yes, my first two videos of this format involve children's games. We're really setting the bar high for the new era of this channel, aren't we? Bluey the video game was developed by Artax Games and published by Outright Games. Yes, Outright Games are back at it again. It's a kid's game, did you expect anything else? As mentioned earlier, it was released on November 17th, 2023 for PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Despite the game sharing the same publisher as the Baby Shark game we covered previously, Bluey the video game is a much different beast, taking the form of an interactive sandbox adventure game, more in line with the Peppa Pig or MLP games. The game is split into four episodes, with each episode serving to progress an overarching story in where the Healer family, during the school holidays, find a piece of a treasure map Bandit and his brothers, Stripe and Radley, made when they were kids. The family proceed to go on a treasure hunt, acquiring the other pieces of the map through quests involving Stripe and Radley, all the while recording their adventures through a sticker book. You can play as any of the Healer family throughout the game, and you are able to switch characters at any time. Additionally, the whole game is playable in co-op up to four players. There are four unique locales available to explore in this game, even if the game really wants you to think there are five, with the player allowed to fully explore them between each episode. Each location should prove familiar to fans of the show, and I feel that they have been recreated very well, with the Healer's House being the standout. Being able to fully explore the main setting of the show in a fully 3D map was definitely quite pleasant, and I feel that kids and adults who enjoy the show will get a kick out of it. The game adopts a visual style that, at least at first glance, is not too dissimilar to something like Paper Mario, with the characters being 2D running around in a 3D environment. Of course, the animations certainly aren't as polished as Paper Mario's, which can lead to some... interesting bugs from time to time. Oh god, please stop staring into my soul, I'm sorry I'm bad mouthing a game, but I have to, please make it stop! Heck, when not in a cutscene, the healers don't even move their mouths when talking, which is kind of weird. Wow, 
So many boxes. Yeah, someone was meant to put them in the garage. Oh, yeah. I was going to get round to them. On the treadmill. Some of these boxes look really old. Well, that's because some of this stuff is from when I was a kid. They're practically ancient. The cast from the show all reprise their roles for this game, which is nice. And while there's no original music exclusively for the game, all the music, composed by Geoff Bush, is ripped directly from the show, which gets no complaints from me. I love Bluey's music, and it was great to hear it as I was playing the game. However, I do wish the VAs had recorded more lines for the gameplay segments. Wow! wow. You've got a stickers board! Uh, That's awesome! Wow! You've got a stickers board! That's awesome! Wow! You've got a stickers board! That's awesome! Hey kids! Let's check out the sticker book! Hey kids! Let's check out the sticker book! Hey kids! Let's check out the sticker book! Can you find and open the sticker book? I'll get to the bloody sticker book in my own time, Chili. Why don't you keep struggling to get up the stairs to your own house? Also, some of the line delivery and audio mixing is questionable to say the least. Here we go! Whoa! The balloon! <laughs> oh, oh no! My biggest gripe with this game, however, is its length. As I mentioned earlier, the game is split into four episodes, and these episodes are structured in a similar manner to the show, which includes how long they each go on for. You can get each episode done within 10 to 15 minutes, which means if you just focus on the story, you can complete the game within an hour. Sure, there are plenty of collectibles to find, and four mini games to extend the runtime, but for a $40 game, one to two hours isn't enough to justify its asking price, no matter how pretty or charming the game is. I suppose I should mention the extra content in this game. Along with the story, there are four mini-games, based off games played by Bluey and Bingo in the show. Keepy Uppy, where you have to keep a balloon in the air for as long as possible. Ground is Lava, which tasks you with collecting stars while avoiding touching the ground. Chattermax Chase, where you chase the titular Chattermax and hold onto it for a period of time. And Magic Xylophone, where you have to freeze the other competitors by playing said Magic Xylophone near them. In addition, there are plenty of collectibles to find throughout your journey. How many you may ask? Oh, about 90. Yes, 90. For a 1-2 to two hour game, that's a lot of collectibles. These collectibles range from toys you can collect and play with, to plants that you need to water. Yeah, I don't know how to connect the two either. There are also 4 special collectibles in each area, with each having 3 tiers to them, which basically means that there are 3 of them to find in the level. Once you collect three of the collectible, you unlock a piece of the final photo in the sticker book. How cute. There are also costumes you unlock as you play the minigames and acquire the collectibles, with these costumes taken from certain episodes of the show. Also cute. That pretty much sums up the game. It's an enjoyable and cute little adventure through the world of Bluey, with interesting locales to explore and plenty of opportunities to create your own fun with the minigames and co-op. However, the experience is kinda let down by the occasional bug and short runtime with the collectibles doing little to improve the value proposition. I would personally wait until it goes on sale for about $20 to $25 personally, but if you really can't wait, I suppose there are worse games to spend your money on. And I should know, I've played worse! And now we move on to the main event, the achievements. Going into the game, I went with the mindset that it would be an easy and relatively simple achievement list. It is a kid's game after all, why would you make the achievements difficult? However, as we saw in the last video, this isn't always the case. Baby Shark's achievement list ended up being rather grindy, and with the game being quite difficult for the target audience, it proved to be one of the more time-consuming achievement lists to finish. Thankfully, Bluey doesn't fall under the same category, and has a very simple and easy list to complete, with 22 achievements to unlock. Also, it has no odd-numbered achievement values, which makes this list infinitely better than Baby Shark's. I still have nightmares seeing those achievements, man. Let's start with the first achievement you can unlock, which can be done within the first 30 seconds of you controlling your character. Yep, seriously. After starting the game and picking which of the healer family you initially want to play as, once you gain control of said character, if you head into the pause menu, go to character selection, and select the other three characters, you'll unlock family matters for playing as all four members of the healer family. 30 seconds and we're already on the board in terms of achievements. You can tell what sort of game this will be. Your first task in the game is to gather all the stuffed animals scattered throughout the house, and doing that unlocks the next achievement. It's like a zoo down here. You're then thrust into the first minigame, Keepy Uppy. There is an achievement tied to every minigame, but you can't get the one for Keepy Uppy right now, so just play out the rest of the episode. 
Once you find the first piece of the treasure map, you'll complete the first episode and unlock the next achievement, Gone with the Wind. You're now free to roam the healer house as you see fit. However, I would recommend looking at the sticker book first. Not only because you'll avoid having an aneurysm through hearing Chili say the same two lines over and over, I'm itching to check out that sticker book, but because it unlocks the level specific collectibles. I won't go over where every collectible is since we'll be here all year, but I'll point out some more tricky ones that took me a while to find. If you want me to do a full collectible guide for this game however, feel free to leave a comment asking for one, and I may get off my lazy butt and actually contribute to society. There was one collectible in the healer house that I did have trouble finding, which was the final hockey stick collectible. At least I think it's a hockey stick? I don't know, I'm sure all the Australian viewers will crucify me for not knowing what it actually is. Either way, I eventually found it on the porch in Bandit and Chili's room, which is the leftmost room on the upper floor, if you don't know where that is. There are also a few collectibles that require the use of the piggyback feature. While playing as Bluey or Bingo, if you hold the action button, in my case X, while near Bandit or Chili, they will proceed to piggyback off said parent you have decided to torture. You now can, in an excellent show of parenting, throw your child up to a higher ledge by using the throw button in my case, B. This makes some higher up collectibles more easy to obtain, so make a note of that. While hunting for the collectibles, we can also pick up a few achievements along the way. If we go into the garden and run alongside the house, you'll see two football goals, and well, a football. The football is a collectible we have to get, but before picking it up, use the kick button, in my case B, to kick the ball into the goal three times to earn the hat trick achievement. Once that's done, pick the football up to add it to your sticker collection. You'll also notice some watering cans lying around that you can pick up. If you take a watering can and fill it up at a tap or water source, you can proceed to water various plants scattered around the area. These also count as collectibles and you have to water each type of plant in the game at least once until it fully grows. Once you water your first plant to completion, you'll also unlock the achievement, Pretty Cool Leaves. Another quick achievement we can get is Bouncy House, for reaching the maximum height while bouncing on the trampoline. Simply go to the trampoline out the back, get on, and hit the jump button every time your character hits the trampoline. You'll get the achievement after 5 or 6 bounces. The final achievement we can get here before moving on with the story is Keepy Uppy Expert. They spell uppy wrong, amateurs. For hitting the balloon 25 times in the Keepy Uppy minigame before it hits the ground. It's very simple, and the balloon doesn't move around too much when you hit it thankfully. Also, there's a little marker for where the balloon is going to land, which is nice. Once you're satisfied that you've got all the collectibles in the house, don't worry if you haven't, you can always come back to any level you completed later, we can move on to the second episode, which takes place in the park. You can't get any collectibles or achievements until you complete the episode, so just play through normally. You'll be introduced to the second minigame, Ground as Lava, and if you've ever had a childhood, you'll know the game here. You'll play the minigame twice, with the second time being to rescue Muffin, the Harbinger of Chaos. Rescuing Muffin unlocks the next achievement, Flamingo Queen. I'm the Flamingo Queen! You'll also unlock Classic Stripe for finishing episode 2 during the following cutscene. At the park, we can now get a couple more achievements. While roaming around, you may notice a set of three slides all quite close to each other. If you head to the top of the highest most slide, hit the action button to go down the slide, and keep mashing the action button, you'll jump straight onto the next slide down. Mash the action button again, and you'll jump straight onto the third slide. Chaining these three slides in a row will net you the achievement Slide Slide Slide. You may not get it the first time, but it shouldn't take too many attempts. Another achievement you can easily get is Toast is Ready, for catapulting someone off the seesaw. When I first saw this achievement, I thought it meant you had to launch another character off the seesaw, but it turns out that launching yourself counts too. So just get on the seesaw with the books on the other side, jump, get launched, and earn a very trivial achievement. The final achievement we can earn in the park is the only way to travel on lava, for winning 5 games of ground as lava. The two times you played this game in the story count towards this achievement, so you only have to win 3 more. Good stuff. After that it's just a case of collecting everything you can in the park. Make sure to water all the plants too, especially one that grows into a full on tree. The tree needs a lot of watering, which is very annoying when you consider that you can only use the watering can 3 times per refill. There's also a pavlova collectible on top of a lamppost that requires you to bounce off the seesaw next to it in order to reach it, so be wary of that. Moving on to the third episode, which is the healer house again, we get introduced to Chattermax, to the wahoo wahoo. Anyway, feeding Chattermax for the first time gets you the achievement, feed me squeaky, and completing the third episode nets you the achievement, gotcha. 
You also unlock the minigame Chattermax Chase, where you'll get the achievement called Don't Let Go once you win 5 games of it. At this point you have obviously noticed the clothing items you've been unlocking throughout the game, and not only because you're forced to as part of the second episode. The way you unlock these clothing items is by completing minigames and finding collectibles, which add to a little star meter on the top left of the screen. Once it fills up you unlock a new clothing item, and once you unlock the last one, which is the royal crown, you'll unlock the achievement Fancy Ladies. As for the collectibles in the Healer House Part 2, they're located outside for the most part so don't bother looking around inside, with one exception. There are a couple of plants located on the upstairs porch near the kitchen. Seriously, who has a kitchen upstairs? Go to the east side of the upper floor of the house to find it, and the plants. From what I've seen, these two plants only appear here, and these were the last things I needed for the sticker book. I spent a good part of an hour trying to find them, so don't make the same mistake I did. Another collectible that took me a while to find was the last leaf bug collectible, which I eventually found hanging out behind a bush in the back garden. Sneaky little bugger. Moving on to the fourth and final episode, we move on to the fourth area, the creek. We also get the standard two achievements for the episode. First is Freeze, for freezing Grandpa Mort twice using the magic xylophone, just hitting the action button near him. And the second achievement, The Creek is Beautiful, for completing the episode. And with that, you completed the story. Yep, told you the story is very short. At least the morals and theme are nice, even if the plot itself is very basic. With the story complete, you unlock the final area, the beach, as well as the final minigame, Magic Xylophone. For this minigame, you have to freeze everyone else within 30 seconds to earn the achievement Island Rhythms. The AI of the characters makes this very easy, since they all kind of just run into you. Just keep mashing the action button and you'll get this no problem. Now the only thing to do is finish the sticker book. Fun! With the creek and the beach, the collectibles here aren't too hard to find, save for a couple of plants in the creek, but if you keep the watering can handy, you'll be fine. Once you collect every newspaper, pavlova, leaf bug and hockey stick collectible, you earn the achievement ALL THE THINGS! And once you get the rest of the stickers in the sticker book, you earn Sticky Situation and Holidays! And that's it, you've fully completed Bluey the video game. Hooray! Enjoy your 1000 gamer score or platinum trophy if you're on PlayStation. Overall, it took me 3.5 hours on stream to get all the achievements, but if you have a collectible guide handy, you can easily complete it in under 2 hours. None of the achievements are challenging at all, and I'm sure even kids won't have any trouble collecting at least a majority of them. That's why I prefer this list over Baby Shark's list, honestly. It might be less of a challenge for us adults, but at least it gives kids a chance to complete it too, which is what a kids game should do. Speaking of, I also think this game is just a good game for kids overall. While I still don't think it's entirely worth the $40 price tag, and it has quite a few issues with animation, audio, and AI, it has a lot of charm. Kids can become easily engrossed into the world of Bluey with the locales available to explore, and heck, even adults might find it cute to watch or even play. It's a solid game with definite room for improvement if they ever were to take another crack at it. On that note, I'll end the video with a little message to the publisher, Outright Games. Please focus on making and improving games like this. It's a solid foundation, but it needs more work. These games need more content to justify their price tags, or if you can't do that, price the games more appropriately. I'd rather have fewer games like this that are more fleshed out versus some of the tripe you've put out such as Baby Shark or Race with Ryan. You can become a solid game publisher outright games, but you need to make your games worth it. Well, that's two videos about children's games in the can. I should probably move on to something different for the next one, but what? It's not like something can magically zoom in and give me a video idea. Oh, biscuits.